Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and I'm here with SCP-4... I mean, Taboo. There is no such thing as an SCP-4000. This is only the forest with many and no names. Whew. Let's begin. And if you like the video, please like the video. If you want to comment another video, please do so down below. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Whew. So, we... So there are some things that we should not do while we're in... while we're, we're talking about SCP... a taboo. One of them is refer to the same name twice, and I just did that. I kind of screwed up. Another is to say our own name. Because the entities here might steal it. So, let's begin with our warning. Warning. The following anomaly is affected by communication. Do not refer to it in speech or writing unless trained. <clears throat> Item number. Restricted per protocol 4000 issue. Object class, Keter. Special containment procedures. The extra-dimensional location described below, as well as the entities and landmarks contained therein, are, are nomenclative hazards, issue class, and therefore may not be referred to by any name, tower, or designation. Only descriptions may be used when referring to the forest outside normative space, and native entities thereof. Variations must be made in descriptions each time a subject is described. Descriptions may be color coded for or clarity. Other plan is accessibility. We can click on that link, but we don't need it. And florid language may be used for the sake of nomenclative of diversity. In the event of a nomenclative containment breach, referring to it by the same name twice, Sarah the SU class recontainment protocol must be carried out immediately by the individual or responsible for the breach. If the individual is unable to perform the procedure, the responsibility falls to the individual's next of kin. If the individual responsible for the breach has no next of kin, the individual's name must be expurged from all existing documentation and records. Any other individuals possessing the same name are to be administered type 3 viral amnesics and assign a new one. <clears throat> In accordance with the Order 054000F26, at least one successful expedition into the strange and dangerous woodland area must be carried out per year to access any to assess any deviations from baseline abnormality. Due to the high risk involved in entering the place where the nameless are found, these are also known as the Fae Folk or the Fairy Folk that we will be going over when we get to more Cactus versus stuff. The reason why I'm doing in, in some of these things that, that are not cactus verse is because context is kind of important. Personnel sent and in to conduct research must be trained in standard exploration protocol as described in, in 4000 SEP. Unauthorized documentation of the forest found in chimneys must be suppressed via standard information and containment protocol. Unauthorized individuals with knowledge of procedure 4000 Holloway are to be administered, are to be administered amnesthetics. Amnesthetic glass has to be determined on a case by case basis and may be re released following a period of this additional is, is, is rehabilitation. Description The SCP in question is the exponential. Is an extra dimensional forested area with numerous anomalous qualities, including a hazardous nomenclative phenomenon. This anomalous location is accessed by performing 4000 Hold Away, C Document, and DLC 4000H. After completing the procedure, subjects emerged from the opening of, the, of a dipolated brick well fixed into the forest floor. See Figure 1.2. Where? Oh well. <clears throat> the only way to reliably transfer, tra traverse the unusual terrain is by use 
It was of a single dirt path. The exploration that diverged from said route have resulted in immediate loss of contact with the participating subjects. The sole safe road may only be traversed in a single direction, and any attempts by subjects to turn back and return the way they came will result in a similar loss of contact. <coughs> Excuse me. I might have a little bit of a cold. The unnamed world does not adhere to the constraints of linear space. Autographic endeavors have resulted in vastly different routes from being recorded with each expedition. And sections of the mandatory trail, which should logically overlap or intersect, do not. Similar to abnormalities have been and observed in geonormative forests as well, though no other connection between these phenomena have been confirmed. The only consistency in the layout is the access point, which is always located at both ends of the main road. The only way for a subject to safely exit the woods which have no name after they have begun following it is by walking its entire length and returning to the place where they began at the opposite end. <sighs> a variety of anomalous entities native to the nameless habitat, or pushed there by humans, have been documented. Native entities often undergo changes in physical structure when unobserved, which has made it difficult for researchers to determine which recorded entities are unique things and which are new iterations of those previously documented. Entities claim they have no control over these changes and frequently express dissatisfaction when they occur. Native entities often obstruct the tell which subjects tread, making it necessary for subjects to interact with them to progress. Native entities are sapient and often highly temperamental, but can be interacted with it safely as long as 4,000 SCP precautions are followed. Rare occasions have been recorded where native entities appeared inherently inimical toward human life. Consequences for disregarding these precautions will vary depending on the personality of the offended entity. Degrees of retribution encountered by research subjects have included verbal re rebuke, acts of violence, and anomalous alteration of the subject's physical or conceptual or nomenclative attributes. <clears throat> Various anomalous phenomena may occur when consistent nomenclature is applied to the realm of the unnameable. Its native entities or its landmarks, these phenomena are still poorly understood, partially due to the prohibition and of nomenclature experimentation er 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 under Order 05 4000 F26. Documented nomenclature phenomena have included episodic uh, cluster headaches among, among subjects exposed to affected nomenclature, visual and auditory hallucinations among unexposed subjects, usually involving e environmental or entities described by nomenclature, gossary. Illusion fanta uh, 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 yeah, have also been reported in a small subset of cases. <clears throat> Sudden onset of psychogenic amnesia among exposed subjects, the development of non human and physical old characteristics among um, uh, exposed subjects, such as feathers and pollen sacs, the development of biological. All components in non biological mediums or nomenclature is written or re recorded. Sudden and involuntary transport of, of exposed subjects to the wilderness of unnamed things without the use of Procedure 4000 Holloway. Manifestation of various flora with, uh, within indoor spaces where nomenclature, where nomenclature was used. Sudden transport of native entities to areas where nomenclature was used. Biological fusion of exposed subjects and native entities. Biological fusion of native entities and architectural spaces where nomenclature was used. Extreme iron deficiency in, ex in exposed of subjects with an ex absence of expected negative side effects. Order 05 F26 was ratified by the Overseer Council in 1954. A 1970 amendment requires that 05 F26 receive unanimous endorsement from the Council every 10 years in order to remain in effect. To date, 
No overturn was regarding 05 4000 F26 have been disseminated to lower clearance levels. Now. <clears throat> Some notable containment breaches. Let's start with June 9th, 1954. Name subject. The glade of which we um, speak. Summary. Initial discovery and subsequent Henry took place in an abandoned home in rural Connecticut. Circumstances of the discovery are unclear due to a lack of surviving personnel, but general timeline events has been established. Timestamps are in centered and format, which means I don't know them, so I'm just going to read them without reading the timestamps because I don't know oh, how to read these. The Hall of Unspoken I was discovered and given a temporary Type E designation by field agent Garrett Bradley, creating a nomenclature of branch. Field agent and Moya Moya. Adonati enters the land beyond the flu and is never recovered. Agent Bradley begins to gradually sink into the hardwood floor, or nearby agents flee the area. Soon after exiting the house, all agents are suddenly rendered, rendered mobile, with the exception of Timothy Woods, who was not aware of the Type B designation. Immobilized agents vocalize distress as their torsos elongate. Elongation ceases after gra agents have reached a height approximating that of the chimney where Procedure 4000 hallway was, was performed. Smoke expels from the racial orifices. Timothy Woods reports these developments via a radio to site. <clears throat> oh wait, secondary breach is caused with Timothy. It Woods repeatedly uses the phrase "the blank." I'm guessing the force to describe the world where words have power. Timothy Woods states that he sees his name in the trees. Site 08 personnel for S. Timothy Woods. For further information, Timothy Woods attempts to orally consume his radio and soon expires from internal injuries. <sighs> Timothy Woods correspondents in Site 08 are observed suffering from severe headaches and are placed under quarantine. Osceola for two regions resembling tree branches emerge from the orbital cavities of quarantined Site 08 personnel. Personal report no physical discomfort despite exhibiting full global relaxation in both sockets. <clears throat> Afterward, nomenclave anomaly eventually discovered after numerous cycles of multivariable D-class exposure to affected at Site 08 personnel. Breach date, December 22nd, 1955. Name subject. The footpath which loops around the entire area. Summary. Desk Desk completed the first ex exploration mission in the Grove beneath the aimless stars and was immediately quarantined. After exhibiting no anomalous is effects for, for, for 72 hours, Desk Desk was then allowed to write an account of his experiences. When researchers returned to check on his progress, Desk Desk had vanished. Traces of soil and human tissue were left later were later found in the pencil, paper, and Harvey Mansfield that Stess had used in his writing. August 19, 1958. The named subject, the native entity that sits atop a bone, a throne of bones and cradles a flaming child. After completing an exploratory emission, field agent Ethan Mercy Mercy Mercy. Mercy used the same method several times to discover or in describing a particular or native entity. So, and later, he complained of severe nausea and began to vomit blood and bone marrow. Over the course of several hours, Agent Mercy, 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 Mercy was reported to have somehow orally expelled most of his bones. Personnel throughout Site 08 experienced auditory hallucinations of a children's laughter for the next several days. Breach date March 4th, 1966. Name subject. The nave entity that resembles a fire uttered lion with a skeletal ram's head. Summary. College student around 
Vanessa Hayford attempts to check into numerous medical uh, facilities in and around Portland and Oregon. Complaining that her head had become covered in flesh despite exhibiting no signs of uh, unusual tissue growth. She was eventually detained by Foundation investigators and found to be in possession of a book that described, among other things, the full contents of the books are, are triggered to level 5 for sale under 05. I for that's F26. Our official status has noted that certain rituals and locations described in the books are strong resemblance to SCP-1660 and SCP-860. Recent classifications have revealed that another passage may have been written in a reference to SCP-3560, which was discovered more than 50 years after the book's recovery. The significance of SCP-3560 is potentially for the, in the existence of Anderson's robotics has yet to be determined. Anyway, Procedure 4000 Holloway in its entirety, observed laying that foundation for snow assistant removed the flesh from her head if she cooperated. No such procedure was ever carried out. Hayforth confessed that she had received the book from an acquaintance in the Wanderers Library, which I should probably go over eventually. Afterward, this was the first known case of a civilian and triggered nomenclature of, of reach. Similar incidents have occurred intimately since, and in 2012, a Navy indie was photographed that superficially resembled a young Hayforth, more than two decades after Hayforth died in Foundation custody. <coughs> Excuse me. Reach date, October 30th, 1992. Name subject, the house in which Michael Ashley Vincent spent several nights during his exploratory mission. Summary, Agent Ma Michael Ashley Vincent, who had completed exploratory mission several years prior, used to possess a, a, a blank house several times while recording a story to, his, to two of his uh, colleagues who did not have names. The statement has been flagged for potential mimetic corruption. I don't care what the records say. After 30 years in the Department of Medmax, you learn to follow your gut. And right now, my gut? I just told me that there's something off about this, Dr. Storm. Sometime later, a large brick building manifested inside Site 08, intersecting with existing architecture. Michael Ashley Vincent's headless body was found inside, seizing violently, and fused at the neck to a life picture are made of elk antlers. His face, which did not appear animate, had a large to take off the entire surface of the building's floor. Food agents sent an into the face's mouth found that it did not possess a full dig digestive tract. However, Mike Oashi's nameless colleagues were reported to have been conjoined with its uvula. <sighs> Alright, so this is the procedure to get into the forest. 4000 Holloway. The following is a censored list of instructions for accessing the Horizon Beyond labels. Certain steps have been made in this version of, of this document. Phrases and counterphrases at the end of the procedure will differ depending on subject's type category. The oldest child and their family, type 1. The middleborn, type 2. Or the youngest slash only child, type 3. <clears throat> Using organic kindling, start a steady flame within any indoor fireplace. Combine the powered bones of a male red flock, fox, vulpus vulpus, any age, an adult male lion, panthera leo, and a valeen whale, mississippi, any age, any gender. Cast a mixture into the fire. Take an easily burnt personal possession of strong sentimental value and allow the fire to consume it. Carefully re release three feathers from any a, a black plumed bird of the genus Corvus over the flower and allow the smoke to carry them up to the flue. Once the fire begins to emit vocalizations, respond with the, with the counter phrase. See phrases and counter phrases below. If the correct statement ends are given, the fireplace will expand. And, and, a, and the ladder will descend. The fire will be harmless. 
If incorrect statements are made for any reason, I immediately apologize and do not attempt procedure 4000 Holloway again at any point in the future. <clears throat> <sighs> Note: Individuals who were who are present during Ring Procedure Four Thousand Holloway, but were not the ones conducting Procedure Four Thousand Holloway, must not respond to any to vocalizations or approach react to fireflies under cir any circumstances. Phrases and counter phrases. Variant one for the oldest siblings. Phrase, these woods have rules. Counterphrase, or so they say. Phrase, and if you break them. Counterphrase, a price I'll, pr I'll pay. Variant 2, for middle siblings such as myself. I think, was that right? Yes, the middle born. Phrase, is someone there? Counterphrase, there's only me. Phrase, and who are you? Counterphrase, I guess you'll see. I'm gonna stop saying these labels. Type 3, for the youngest born or only a children. What do you seek? To walk the trees. Now mind your manners. To walk them, please. 4,000 SEP. <clears throat> Note, the following is a, trun a truncated list containing only instructions that are crucial to survival. Personnel assigned to explorate additive duties must also familiarize themselves with 4,000 SEP 3 through 8 before embarking. So we're doing 1 through eight, because might as well. Anyway. 4000 SEP-1, General Guidelines for Exploration, 1.01. .01. You must be equipped with a standard Foundation Expedition Pack prior to entering the place where names are not allowed. Do not consume any food other than the rations included inside the standard Foundation Expedition Pack. Do not bring firearms into the dimension of trees under any circumstances. Type 1 subjects must avoid it and accepting or directly handling that which could be considered a valuable resource. This includes but is not limited to forms of currency, precious metals and stones, objects imbued with useful anomalous properties, and real crafted and weaponry. Type 2 subjects must avoid any native entities that regard the subject with affection or romantic attraction and must not give the appearance of reciprocating those feelings in any way. So it's made by a native entity. The it's made by a native entity which profess affection and romantic attraction for the type 2 subjects are false. Type 3 subjects must avoid partaking in activities that are commonly considered frivolous, luxurious, or physically comforting. This includes, but is not limited to, dancing, smoking, playing with toys, drinking anything other than water, listening to music, and sleeping on a pad surface. <clears throat> Structures encountered along the way you must travel may be entered after knocking at the entryway. Leave the structure from where you came. If entering uninvited, do not be discovered. If you fall asleep in the woods where rules are paramount, record your dreams. A journal is included in your expedition pack. If you encounter any landmarks or entities similar to a dream you recorded, treat the dream as fact. Hmm. I think it's a bit long. I won't for now. Four thousand SEP two guidelines for interacting with native entities. Greet native entities with any formal 
all salutation. Except for, for oh, examples of acceptable greetings. Good morning. Hello. Pardon me. Examples of unacceptable greetings. Hey, yo, what's up? Oh, so my natural way of greeting people is not okay. Before engaging in conversation, if you're a female, bow or curtsy. I will anyway because I'm neither. And now I want to take big chances. Speak in a cordial tone of voice. Do not make any statements that you know to be false. Do not make this disparaging comments about Navy Indies while in their presence. Say please and thank you when appropriate. Refer to and address Native Indies using descriptions of their physical appearance per protocol of 4000 SU. Do not refer to a Native Indy by name, title, or designation, even if it introduces itself with such. Do not state your name, co nickname, codename, alias, or any other or personal designation when in the presence of a Native Entity. If a Native Entity offers to assign you a name, title, or designation, Politely decline. <clears throat> if a native entity makes a statement in which it refers to you by a name, title, designation, or anything other than a physical description, ignore the statement as though it had not been spoken. If pressed for information that is considered confidential, refuse, briefly apologize, and bow. <clears throat> If a native and, and, and the appears to require your assistance, consider its appearance before choosing to help. If the entity appears threatening, do whatever is necessary to aid it. If the entity appears or is attractive or harmless, do not approach. Always feed a native entity if it is hungry. This overrules whether or not uh, uh, you should help it or not, as say by previous two rules. Ooh. Do not attempt to mount any bestial entities that you encounter unless it has earned your trust and given and you its consent. If you are offered a physical gift, receive it with both hands. Do not discard this gift, even if it appears to have no use or, or value. This is overruled by a 1.04. AKA type 1 on subjects should not be handling viable objects. If a native entity offers you a non-physical gift or attempts to initiate a trade, politely decline. You may accept food offered by native entities and offer that food to other native entities you encounter, but do not consume it yourself. <clears throat> do not sleep in any lodging offered by native entities. You may sleep inside the residence of a native entity as long as you do not have an invitation to do so. If a native entity offers to accompany you on your journey, accept, but do not tell them where you are going. If you are aided by a native entity, you must aid in return if you have not done so already. If you encounter an incorporeal humanoid that claims it is not a native entity, disregard all previous protocols and follow its instructions. And finally, we have... Interview log 4215. Request Interview 4215. Access denied. This has been expunged. Request Interview 4215. Credentials OCJ for. I can't read that. That's not bad English. Access granted. Hello, Dr. Javers. Interview Archive 4215. The following is a series of interviews conducted by Dr. Eugene Javers over the course of several years. This data has been expunged from all general documents under Order 054000F26. This 
is what happens when you break the rules of the forest with no name. Interviewer, Dr. Eugene J. Burst. Interviewee, the native entity with a head resembling that of a rabbit. See figure 2.1. Where? I'm sick of these people like... Mentioning stuff, but not being able to see it. Forward. Interview who conducted in 2005 during Dr. Draper's first expedition into the space where speech is deadly. Good morning, strange traveler. Good morning. It's nice to see a new face around these parts. Can't excuse the smoke. Just airing my thoughts. How's your name? <coughs> How is... I'm sorry. I'm afraid I can't tell you that. Dr. Draper is... Her spouse. Are you simple? I'm merely asking how your name is. My name has smelt of raspberries lately, I think, or snapdragons. It's so hard to tell these days when one makes an effort. Ah, my apologies. I'm afraid my name has tasted rather tart as of late. Dr. Japers was later reprimanded for violating SEP-203. The poor entity laughs and doffs his hat. No, I'm the one who should apologize. I shouldn't have pried. It's quite alright, I don't mind at all. It has been lovely to meet you, but I must be on my way. Must you, though? My home is close by and I was hoping to invite you in for tea. Dr. Javers bows again. I'm terribly sorry, but unfortunately I cannot stop at this moment. Perhaps another day. Very well. Until next time. I'm a stranger whose name tastes rather tart. Encounter 2. Same interviewer and interviewee. New description for the interviewee, the gentleman with a Leporian visage. Forward. Interview conducted in 2008 during King Javer's fourth expedition into the burrow that betwixt into that burrow betwixt the bricks. It's hard to read that. <coughs> <coughs> Dr. Javer's crests a hill and discovers his hair-like acquaintance tending to a patch of cabbages. Good morning, stranger. Except, ah, pardon me, we've met before, or haven't we? Good afternoon, I believe so, yes. Three years ago, if memory serves. I remember now, you ran in and off quite a hurry. Yes. My apologies to that. I was new here and very and wary of those I encountered. Still the apologetic one, I see. No matter. You are not from here? Very interesting. What woods are you from? I do not come from any woods. <coughs> Nonsense. Certainly you have trees where you're from, do you not? We do have trees, but they're very sparse. Most of the land is covered in homes and businesses. Then they are inferior woods, but woods nonetheless. Tell me, how did you get here? I see you have an inquiring mind. I would like to ask you a question, if that's alright. Pardon my lack of ma manners, I consider myself something of a scholar. You see, and I get a bit excited when I have a chance to learn a forest outside my own. By all means, who's your question? <clears throat> hmm. 
Hmm. When we last met, you said it had become difficult to describe your name. Do you have any theories for why that may be? Hmm. I can only assume it's because of how long we've been apart. My name and I, that is, it was a good name. A proud name, I'm fairly sure. By this point, though, it's probably decayed from its former grandeur. If it even still exists. Where do you think it is currently? First fellow scholar, you must answer my previous question. Dr. Jabers nods, even though he should have declined the name. I came through the old but distinguished well at the end of the footpath I'm presently preambulating. <sighs> this information is not considered classified from native entities. The other individual hesitates before speaking. Oh my, it's been quite some time. I'll be frank, I thought all the ally old allies had died out. Hmm. Did your grandfather or, or some such relation have a lover out here? Dr. Japers bows. My deepest apologies, I'm afraid I cannot answer that question. Very well, I understand. I'd invite you to my cottage for tea, but I suppose that's not possible for you, is it? I'm afraid not. The conversational partner laughs, plucks a cabbage leaf, and offers it to Dr. Japers. You needn't fear so much. Take this and be on your way. Dr. Japers accepts the leap with both hands. Thank you very much. Happy travels to you. And may you find the one you're looking for. Encounter 3 Interior description has changed to the leaf giver, as it should. Forward Interview conducted in 2013 during Dr. Japer's ninth and most likely final expedition into Yonder Vale of, West, of Restless Wanderers. Due to the unique knowledge that the one who bore the gift of college seemed to possess about our world, Dr. Japers was instructed to conduct a more thorough interview should be encountered a third time. <coughs> <sighs> Additionally, Dr. Japers was granted special permission to make false statements for the sake of facilitating conversation as his first encounter showed the fluffy one to be susceptible to deceptions. Traveling along the- begin log. Traveling along the way of wary adventurers, Dr. Japers encounters a small white cottage with a thatched roof. <sighs> a small opening in the shape of, of a rabbit's head is cut into the front door. Dr. Japers approaches it and knocks. Hello? Is anyone home? Yes, one minute. Exactly one minute passes, the door opens. Ah, we meet again. Please, come in, come in. Dr. Japers is light inside. The interior is sparsely decorated with wooden furniture and needlework. Hmm. You have a lovely... a home. Ha! <laughs> you have a lovely sense of humor. The homeowner hurries to a kitchenette in the corner and begins preparing a kettle. No, really, I think it's charming. I suppose. It was just meant to be until things cooled down on the other side. But, well, you know. I'm afraid I don't know. Would you like some help? No, 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 no. You, ha you just have yourself a seat at the table over there while I get the tea ready for us. Whew. Dr. Japers draws his chair and seats himself. You're most generous, but I don't think my digestion will permit it. Oh, poor fellow. Well, I find the presence of tea to be comfort in any case. Whew. You are most kind. Tell me, could you explain what you meant by cooled down? His furred host turns his stove on and stares out the window, cut into a, 
they will look earth or shape as a hole under the door. Your relations didn't tell you the full story, I suppose, about the turmoil that drove us here. Which is mostly humanity driving them there as they're still in their names somehow. <sighs> turmoil? Was there a war? The toughest one sighs. Isn't there always? My grandparents did tell me there were wars, but I never knew of one with you and your kind. It doesn't surprise me. There are very few even in these woods that still remember. Memory is the burden of the old, I suppose. But yes, when I was a young lad, in a form very different from the one I possess now, I lived on the other side of the well. It's where I was born, where I grew up, and if I dare to dream, where I will someday return. Why don't you then? The kettle whistles. I can't. Not unless I know I could be welcome back. <sighs> the maker of the tea pours a cup and seats himself of a, seats itself across the table. I'm sure you don't know this and say keep themselves hidden. But there are those who would destroy me at nearest chance. Ah, my apologies. These are dark memories. I'm sure you don't want to hear about them. The teller of the story sips its tea. No, please, go on. These things are of interest to me. I'm a fellow, sco I'm a fellow scholar, remember? This is Dr. Draper's biggest mistake, and uh, one that he should have known to avoid. Unfortunately, Dr. Javers made this mistake, and thus it is the end of Dr. Javers. Or rather, a switch of sorts. As you wish, fellow scholar. I shall talk until the tea is cold. <clears throat> Much as it grieves me to say it, we were betrayed. We had fought side by side, you know, in the war against that factory. We had done nothing but help them. And what did they do? They destroyed us. They took so many of our lives, and all of our names. Some of us fled here when the war was just beginning. But not many, not many. Still, though, I don't hate them. I'm glad for that. I'd imagine so. There are some old fogies around in these parts who bear a grudge against the whole species. But I know you're not all that bad. There were many who sheltered us, fought for us, even died for us. Some came to live here amongst us. Rest their souls. I myself quarried a human once upon a time. He came to visit at a time or two, but I never saw him after that. I so wondered now and again if he fell at the hand of an unkind neighbor, or if he merely stopped caring to see me. But it's no matter now. I apologize for rattling on. On about old flames. Certainly such things are of no interest to you. But, hello. Hello, scholar. On the contrary, I'd like to hear more of these stories. The life of you and your people is of great interest as to me. I'm sure it is, fellow scholar. A strong breeze moves through the house. Neither party he speaks for half a minute. The rabbit person who lives there grunts and places a hand on its head, as if in pain. Dr. Jaffers places his hand against the teapot. They have switched. Jaffers lost his name to the 
a rare person who lives as where he was. Basically, a nomenclature or containment breach has occurred. It appears the tea has gotten cold. I think it's time I took my leave. Speech lady slurred. What? You're leaving? I I should leave too then. Dr. Japers rests from the table. No, 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 no. I'll be going alone. Thank you. It's a prompt, yes, and I'm grievously sorry to do this. But I really must be going. I believe I'm long overdue to return home. What is... I don't... Please, don't go! Something isn't... It can't be helped. Stop! What have you done? I don't know who... What happened to my name? I can't... Dr. Jaber is quickly exits the house. His former companion whimpers and looks at its hands as he leaves. Hmm. It does taste rather tart. End log. Dr. Draper successfully returned to Site 08, but was reported missing soon after. The investigations of those experiences are about to have been inconclusive. It was, uh, Initially, he theorized that Dr. Japers was exposed to a novelist's influence on his physiology during his most recent mission. However, through a thorough analysis showed no genetic abnormalities in the fur he'd shed on his expedition gear. Other than the fact that Dr. Japers used to be human until he had fur due to an anomalous effect. And that was the forest with many nomenclature related anomalies. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like I got on the video. Oh comment down below and subscribe to the channel. And if you didn't enjoy this video, then why did you listen for nearly an hour? Like you literally could have left if you didn't really enjoy the video. Oh well, regardless, if you do decide to watch another one of my videos, I'll see you next time. Goodbye!